Ừ, chơi nhà cô cho. Cái nông niệm chỉ bật thiên nâng chân một mục ảo chạc rộm tầng ọ Này ông chân nông nhầm ra xa là đập bốn Nhầm xôm thoa cung đo thạ bì nhá Sa bì nhá rông Sa mì tì vi nô mốc đồng nàng đa mê đăng rọt bà bì ní Mì tì vi đồng nàng đa mê đăng rọt bà bì ní Mì tì vi ca bì kê đầy nôn chí Mì tì vi ca bì kê đầy khi dùm phón Đại miên vật tầm biên được nông cách bì chung Điệp chồng sạm là cả nữ hợp xuyên đi Anh là lòng tam vị thiên chất sập bẩm buôn Anh nụ vị thiên bẩm 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 Này vị thiên tây khăn nông ở vô tổ có Cách bị chung rịp chồng sạm là cả Tại thuốc là ứng chia sầm ngặt Lực lên tại ông chân nông nhầm ra Thế là tập bốn xâm rạch xe bì ní Ông nhầm ra bán tự tu xâm nào Pì mê tử vi ca bì kê đầy nôn chi Nâng mê tử vi ca bì kê đầy khi dùm phón Đại bán xâm nào xâm mọi thuốc Cách bị chung rịp chồng sạm là cả Ní chia xa thiên nạ Sở hạ bì nhá nâng thạm mê tử vi nô mốc Nông nàng đâm đăng rọt bà bì ní Mình bán chùm tuốt tư nâng xâm nào xâm này tí Vẫn tay xâm nào ai miên ca thì ní Chùm bố phiếp xâm ngặt Nay đầm nào ca sư bằng kết khăn ông dân ông rương xôn xôn bấy nâng xôn xôn buồn Ông chúng luôn dùm ra xa là đập bốn xong rạch thả Cách bởi chung riêp chom xạm là ca Ní nâng thư vư chia xa thiên nạ Đói hẹt tha vi chia bởi giáo đo xa thiên nạ chân Sẽ cái đây xong rạch ní thư vư là ứng nơi khăn ông lệ khăn mùi Đói thả ca bị phía xa mân trâu rùm lộp đo phiếp xong ngặt Nay đồng nai ca sư bằng kết nực nông dân đồng rương xôn xôn bấy nâng xôn xôn buồn lời Ông chùm rác cót xong quá tha xa bê nhà thất nực nông tùa nữ tì Đó xong trọc bằng phốt mùi đẹp ai cầm nọt bằng bê ca bị phía xa nà mùi Đẹp ai chùm rùm lúp đọc hiếp xong ngặt nây đồng nai ca sư bằng kết nì Đói xa tay xa bê nhà ai chôn mơ dân đồng rương xôn xôn bấy xôn xôn buồn bàn Hãy đưa cho nơi ông dùm ra xôn lầm lực đo thạm đầy nhạt Ở chút nằm nâng đo ông dùm ra Rồi sân bà miên bò đầm miên nà muối Để ai đùm lúc đo phía tổng ngặt Nây xông nông rương xôn xôn bấy nâng xôn xôn buôn Nông ngầm lòng phê nây cách bởi chung rịp chôm xạm nà cả nì Cá bì mà xôn mình Mê dù bì cá bì cái đây nôn chì Bàn phát đo chôn chìa lẹ gà nạ Cái phần cá đo ông dùm ra Nâng phía kì nền ní nâ xâm nà Nơi xâm nào xông mùi vẹn bọn nâng ca đạo bằng hai anh Cảm nọt hết vì xa nông rương xôn xôn bấy nâng xôn xôn buồn Xâm nào xông ní bạn đạo nữ thằng ngày ní chìa bè xa ông lý nâng chìa bè xa khả mẹ Nơi khăn nông xâm nào đọc bọc luôn Mê tư bì ca bì kê đầy nôn chí bàn xâm nào đọc ông chôn 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 đẹp ra tờ bốn Khăn nông xâm nào bánh hà xìm xìm Ôi cầm nót cao bởi chết xâm rạp cách bởi chung rịp trong xạm nạ cá Đâm bây xâm rộp đùm rùl đo phía kì Phương cao bởi phía xa Từ lư đâm nạ cá đã bằng hành cầm nót hết Để miên chia bằng tổ bằng tổ ấp Nâng đâm bây bình đất mơ bị thi xa Xâm rộp để trở ảnh vật nếp bê là nạ cụt Mê tử bí cao bởi đây nôn chí Cậu bàn xâm nạ xâm ở phá ạ xạm nạ cá Sẽ đắp cho khay cắm Xạ thay đại miên hạ sản niêm Bì thi xì đại bởi dù bằng bây rồi bấy Nâng Pì Thì xí đề bởi dũ Phẩm bây rơi phẩm buôn phòng đẻ Cói bị bàn Sẽ đập ca lực lai ứng đòi sẵn khép Đồ bọc phía kì Từ lơ ca Phạ sạm nạ ca Sẽ đập ta khay cắm Sạ xây Pì Thì xí đề bởi dũ Phẩm bây rơi bấy Ông dùm rẻ Bàn dùm rẻ Đó ông Đó phía kì Tạm đề dạy email Nâng Ca dùm rẻ Chút mình thêm ca Pì bật mấy ní Tha Thay ní Ông dùm rẻ Nâng mình sẽ đập Sạ khay cắm Sạ xây để miên hạ sử niêm Pì thì xí đề bởi dũ Bằng bây rồi bấy Đôi đề bàn cầm nọt ca bởi chết Ca bởi môn nô tì Hà ấy chia chùm nô vĩnh Ông chùm rè Nâng rịp chôm cách bởi chùm Rịp chôm sạm nà ca muối Đâm bởi đây ăn ảnh nhạt Ôi phía ký bàn Miên bàn bình đinh Trời nâng Trời lư Đâm nà ca đạo bằng hai anh cầm nọt hết Vì dù nông rương xôn xôn bây Nâng xôn xôn bốn Đại cầm phong tế Miên chia bằng to bằng to Hồi Ông nhầm rèh, phát đo chút được phía kì này mùi này mùi miên bập địa phê bập phê này tí đâm bây lăng phương tạc đây chân là than là bọc luôn Hay chê đập bông này, ông nhầm rèh xôm phát đo bị tử ca chút từ mê tử vi ca phê kê đây nguồn chí Môn phía kì đo tây tiết vì phụ hâm chìa mà chắc xâm nà 
สมเชยสมเชยลูกกรมเบิกาปิกไดลูกนุนจีสวัสดีครับ Today, uh, we filed a motion, as you said, Mr. President, relating to the ongoing disclosure of statements from cases three and four into our case file. We did so because we want to make sure that this chamber fully understands the situation that we are facing when you are deciding uh, the best way forward. We did so because the information that the prosecution has provided to you about the disclosures so far paints a completely different picture about the impact that these disclosures have had on us. Uh, we filed our motion and are making these submissions today because we need you to understand the extreme challenges and difficulties that the disclosures have created for us and for the, for the trial in general. Um, I have tried to highlight some of these difficulties in uh, our oral submissions uh, throughout uh, the trial segment, but given uh, that the Chamber has advised that it is now working uh, on a way forward, we want to put this information before you and work together with the Chamber and parties to come to an appropriate solution. Uh, as, I, as I have said earlier, but we'll say again, uh, we are not trying to obstruct these proceedings or stop them from happening. Our client has always been very clear he wants the proceedings to go forward. But the question is how we can do so in a way that protects his rights to a fair trial. Now, Mr. President, it seems from our brief discussion on the matter yesterday that there may indeed be some misunderstanding from the Chamber regarding what has been disclosed to us and when. So I think it would be useful for me to begin by providing an overview of what we have received, at least until today. Uh, since last year, we have been receiving witness and civil party statements disclosed to us by the international uh, co-prosecutor with the permission of the international co-investigating judge, uh, but without uh, the apparent support of the national uh, co-prosecutor. We received uh, the first binder of statements in November 2014. Um, they delivered a few more in uh, late January. Uh, however, we received approximately 80% uh, of the documents uh, within the last two weeks, uh, including some documents which were dropped off to us only yesterday morning as we were on our way to court. Uh, International Deputy Co-Prosecutor took pains to point out yesterday that the documents uh, received yesterday were only translation of documents. Uh, and sure, he was right. However, what he failed to mention was that they included translations of statements into English, which is the language in which I and half our team need to receive evidence so that we can understand it. And Mr. President, what is the size of the documents that we are uh, talking about? Uh, at this point, we have calculated that we have received 155 statements, uh, which total uh, 2,838 pages in English alone, 2,838, almost 3,000 pages. Uh, and on top of this, the prosecution has already warned us that the number of disclosed statements will basically double since there are at least another 190 statements still to come. And more than this, there may be an unknown number of documents still to come since the case 3 uh, and 4 investigations are presently still ongoing. Uh, now, as you are well aware, you uh, granted us two days to, uh, I quote, familiar ourselves uh, with the statements that we received in uh, February last month. And 
We calculated that we would have read, uh, we, have, we would have to read all the English statements at the rate of one page per minute uh, over those two days uh, without sleeping, to simply read everything in that time. This doesn't even take into account the, the fact, of course, that we also need to analyze uh, the evidence contained. Uh, Mr. President, Your Honour, the, the situation uh, for us is extremely uh, concerning. Uh, make no mistake, what we are seeing, uh, I believe, is the international co-prosecutor and the international co-investigating judge uh, dumping uh, large parts of the case and the three and four case files into ours. Probably, and if that's different, I, I'll, I'll hear that, uh, in part to ensure that those investigative efforts are not in vain uh, if those cases never go to trial. Uh, and more disturbingly, though, what these disclosures show is that critical aspects of our appeal in case 002-01 remain under active investigation in cases 3 and 4 while at the same time being tried at first instance and on appeal. Uh, Mr. President, to give you just one illustration of this, two of the case four statements we received in January were of a witness who appeared here in court one month later. The, investigator, the investigators interviewed that witness in October 2014 at the time when this chamber was already scheduling the witness to appear in court. Excuse me. Had hearings not been uh, postponed until January, I doubt that we would even have received those statements and the critical evidence they contained before the witness appeared in court. Uh, but it's not just about the volume of evidence, although that in itself is overwhelming. Um, and uh, beyond our team's resources, as I will discuss uh, a little bit later. There is a more critical issue uh, here, and one that the prosecution does not seem uh, to understand, and that is the relevance of the evidence in the statements. This is, in our view, fundamentally, uh, this, in our view, fundamentally affects the question um, of when we should be reviewing the evidence and when we should be cross-examining witnesses about that Evidence. Based on what we have been able to review from the evidence, it is of uh, critical relevance to our case, to case 002-2 overall, and also to issues which are contested and are now being appealed in case 002-01. And some of the evidence fundamentally affects what evidence we now have on the case file about several key issues which are being contested in this case and on appeal. And Mr. President, to avoid any misunderstanding about this, I think it's worth uh, me explaining just what topics exactly are covered in the evidence uh, without, of course, going into uh, too much uh, unnecessary detail. And from what we have uh, read thus far, first of all, uh, witnesses seem to talk or talk about the existence of divisive internal factions within the CPK. There is testimony that, um, that there were four internal factions within the CPK. Those affiliated with the Viet Minh, the nationalistic Khmer Rouge, the Sionukist Khmer Rouge, and Khmer Rouge from China, including Pol Pot. There is information in the new evidence on factions, especially in the northwest and east uh, zones. And there is information identifying Sao Pim as the leader uh, of one faction plotting a, re a revolt uh, against Pol Pot. Witnesses 
uh, also detail the acts and conducts of several CPK leaders, including our client Nguyen Chia himself, and also Tamok Saupim and Runim. Witnesses describe events contested across all trial segments in case 002-02, as well as events already adjudicated in case 002-01 and now on appeal in the Supreme Court chamber. Uh, witnesses uh, discuss the acts and conduct of witnesses who have testified, who are scheduled to testify, who have been requested to testify, or should now uh, be called to testify. Uh, witnesses also uh, detail authority structure and uh, operations in the southwest and northwest zones. And finally, Mr. President, your honest witnesses provide evidence directly relevant to the existence of policies, including forced marriage and the treatment of the Cham and Vietnamese. Uh, now, the prosecution uh, yesterday tried to dismiss our argument that we should not be uh, hearing testimony of two upcoming leading cadres uh, which were scheduled to testify. And I believe they argued that of the new evidence we have received, there was only one uh, relevant piece of information, which was a direct reference to one of two cadres. I also note that in general, the prosecution has tried to decide which trial segments the statements are relevant to, and then to disclose uh, statements ahead of uh, or during uh, that segment. However, uh, Mr. President, with all due respect, given it is us uh, and not the prosecution running our case, the prosecution's assessments have often been uh, inaccurate and unhelpful, uh, including uh, their assessment from yesterday. Uh, dismissing the potential relevance of evidence to a witness just because it doesn't contain a direct reference to that specific uh, witness is, I believe, uh, an oversimplistic and not an appropriate way to evaluate the relevance uh, of evidence. As I said yesterday, we believe that these two leading cadres will be able to provide potentially critical evidence on uh, authority, structure, and operations in the Southwest Zone. This evidence, in turn, is the essential connection needed to be established between the Zone uh, and Nguyen Chia in order to convict him with respect to events at Trump Kok and Krang Kachan. As I also said yesterday, while not having yet been able to read all the disclosures we received in the last two weeks, we were able to identify that they frequently mentioned the authority structure in relation to Trump Kok and Krang Ta Chan. And as I said yesterday, the terms uh, Sector 13, Trump Kok District, and Office 204 are mentioned a total of 324 times in these uh, new statements. Um, uh, Mr. President, when we look at the disclosure statements more generally, we can see that across the board they seem to contain information uh, of critical relevance to multiple aspects, aspects of the defense case, not just specific witnesses and specific uh, events examined in a specific trial uh, segments. Excuse me. And all, all of this evidence uh, requires further analysis before uh, the current trial segment can proceed. <coughs> Quite frankly, Your Honours, it is the right of the accused to have time to, to process this evidence and consider how it impacts not only uh, on the events contested in the current trial segment, but how it affects our overall uh, case strategy. 
It should be obvious, but to be perfectly clear, our overall strategy informs the way we approach every trial segment and every witness, civil party and expert called to testify in each segment. If we push ahead relentlessly with trial and continue to receive evidence in a slow trickle, this will create further difficulties for us and the trial. It already has. For example, from what we have seen in the statements given to us in the last two weeks, uh, we would have asked different questions to expert and witness Elizabeth Becker and possibly to the several Krangta Chan prisoners and cadres who uh, already had appeared. Uh, and now we may have uh, to request that they are uh, recalled. This may delay the trial and threaten the efficient use of the court's limited resources. We will also need uh, to submit this newly disclosed evidence to the Supreme Court chamber as it is, we believe, relevant to our appeal in case 002-01. This will also slow down and significantly complicate appeal proceedings and especially the upcoming appeal hearings. Mr. President, it is all for all these reasons that we ask that we adjourn hearings from now and alternatively we finish this segment by hearing all witnesses except in addition, we propose that if uh, and when we do start with the next trial segment, uh, we choose a segment that uh, is most likely uh, least affected by the ongoing disclosures. So a crime site basically not in the southwest zone or the northwest zone. And from what we can understand, this is probably the segment on the 1st of uh, January And beyond this, Mr. President, we need adequate time to review the disclosed statements before we can begin on segments that are uh, more affected. Now let me turn to another important uh, aspect which we didn't discuss yesterday uh, at all, and that's the evidence on the Khmer Krom. I would like to highlight to the chamber uh, this theme, this theme which has been, as, it's, as it seems, consistently emerging uh, in the case three and four statements. And that is the distinct focus on the experiences uh, of the Khmer Krom within uh, DK regime. In an earlier hearing this month, we already highlighted our concerns uh, about the intended relevance of the Khmer Krom evidence for case 002-02. As we all know, the relevance of Khmer Krom experience in experiences in case 2 has long been uh, contested. Khmer Krom community has lobbied for the experiences to be prosecuted within the context of case 2 as a genocide and maltreatment of a specific group. And these efforts are noted in the media and in filings and other documents on our case file. However, back at the start of case uh, 002, uh, the co-prosecutors decided uh, not to include the Macrom as a specific group in the introductory submission. Despite the lobbying, uh, they also didn't file a supplementary submission. And instead, uh, they merely filed a limited request for investigative action. As you uh, have been able to see, it is detailed clearly in our motion. Uh, but at the time, ECCC spokesman Lars Olsen told the Cambodia Daily uh, in 2010 that the co-prosecutor's failure to file uh, a supplementary submission quote, uh, was not a mistake, unquote. And he is on record uh, when he is saying, and I quote again, there was a reason uh, why they didn't do it. I know that reason, but I can't tell you, end of quote. 
maybe we hear the reason uh, today. And because the co-prosecutors didn't include the Khmer Krom as a targeted group in the introductory or supplementary submissions, the result was that the Khmer Krom were not identified as a targeted group in the closing order or as an alleged victim of genocide. There are only very limited mentions of the Khmer Krom in the closing order at all. And Mr. President, Your Honours, given that the Khmer Krom are not a targeted group in case 002, then the consistent focus on Khmer Krom experiences in the statements that we received uh, from case 3 and case 4 that deeply troubles us. Specifically, we are becoming more and more concerned that the international co-prosecutor intends to effectively expand uh, the scope of case 002-2 by prosecuting Khmer Krom experiences as those of a, what we like to call, quasi-targeted group and a quasi-victim of genocide. What it boils down to is that we are concerned that he is seeking to do this by, if you allow me to use that word, sneaking the Khmer Krom in through the back door of including their experience within that of the Vietnamese, despite the distinct nature of the two groups and the experience of the Khmer Krom not being specifically charged in the closing order. It certainly appears that witnesses' specific identities as Khmer Krom has been relevant at least uh, to the co-prosecutors, uh, the civil party lawyers and this chamber. Uh, indeed, as we also described in our motion, you might recall that even after one of the witnesses who recently testified stressed that he was not a Khmer Krom and had never said he was a Khmer Krom, uh, Judge Laverne uh, continued to press the witness on whether he nevertheless considered himself a Khmer Krom. <coughs> Mr. President, given the focus on Khmer Krom experiences and given the prosecution's track record on Khmer Krom issues, we have requested in our motion that the Chamber assures the parties that the Khmer Krom will not be included uh, as a quasi-targeted group in case 002-2. Uh, the following point, Mr. President, I would like to make is um, the legal status of statements disclosed from cases 3 and 4. We are concerned about that legal status. We are concerned about what will happen if cases 3 and 4 do not go to trial. Even if two of the suspects have now been charged in absentia, Prime Minister Hun Sen's recent statements to the international community and the Cambodian government attitude towards the cases suggest that there is a significant possibility that this will uh, ultimately be the case. And if cases 3 and 4 do indeed fail to make it to trial, we do not know what impact this may have on the validity of statements gathered uh, during their investigation. We don't know how this will affect case 002-02 and how the situation uh, will be managed. Uh, for example, after now trying to make every effort uh, to read the statements, is it possible that we'll be ultimately told that the statements are excluded and that we are now have to uh, unread them? We don't know. And we think that at the very last at the very least, this needs further uh, consideration when we are thinking about how to manage uh, this disclosure process. Then another issue, Mr. President, um, we are also concerned about whether the case 3 and 4 case files are also, also contain other relevant evidence in addition to witness and civil party statements, for example, uh, documents.
Frankly, we have no business with the International Court Investigating Judge in case, cases 3 and 4, uh, just as he, I think, has no business in this court. And that is why we have asked that the Chamber order the International Court Prosecutor to advise you and all of us whether there may indeed be other types of relevant evidence on those, co on those case files. And if so, uh, we ask the Chamber to order the prosecution to request the disclosure of this evidence as soon as possible. Then the disclosure conditions. We spoke briefly, the civil party lawyers spoke briefly about that yesterday as well. In our motion, we have asked the Chamber to exercise its power to maintain good order in the trial by quashing the onerous disclosure conditions that have been imposed on us. These conditions are, for instance, we cannot receive the statements electronically. We receive only one paper copy of each statement in each available language. Only our paid staff can review the statements. Our interns cannot, although I note that the prosecution interns apparently can. Uh, for the statements to be worth searchable and reviewable by multiple staff members at the same time, we have to scan, print, uh, and run electronic text recognition processes on each statement uh, disclosed. Given the volume of data and information technology constraints, this is an extremely time-consuming process. And I think these conditions should have never been imposed on the defense by a party without standing in case 002. And I believe they are possibly irrelevant now that the international co-investigating judge has laid charges against two suspects in cases three and four. They should now be removed, these conditions. Finally, Mr. President, my last uh, point, time, that is about the time and resource constraints on the defense. Let me just say a very short word about the constraints that we are facing. As I mentioned earlier, we, re we received about 80% of the statements la less than two weeks ago and even yesterday. However, in the time, you can see that most defense team members have been here in the courtroom for four days a week. This is because simply because we have uh, because of the limitations we have in the possible size of our team. As I mentioned yesterday, the prosecution has had uh, at least six international prosecutors leading the examination um, and has rotated its support staff. We have just two co-lawyers. In effect, we have only one additional day per week uh, and our evenings and weekends to review the thousands of pages of disclosures. We have only one day a week to discuss the extensive evidence uh, in the disclosed statements with our client, Nunchia, and seek uh, his instructions. Mr. President, we have to do all of this alongside daily trial preparation. We have to do it all without the support of the defense interns. And it seems we have to do it while at the same time continually having prosecutors drop off new dis disclosures to us. And we have given it our best effort throughout case 002 to maintain an understanding of the case file. We have been trying to read these new disclosures even while being in this courtroom full-time for four days a week. However, it's just uh, not possible. We have not been able to read, let alone properly analyze all of the statements disclosed thus far. It is quite simply physically impossible, despite all uh, the, I'm sure, well-intended prosecutor's suggestions. We don't have the resources or the time, and what limited time we have also gets wasted with the extra time it takes for us to process uh, the disclosures just to make them usable. Um, I'm finishing, Mr. President, Your Honours, we cannot keep going on like this. 
if the disclosure process will be continuing in a similar manner, and it seems like it may, then we will be forced to make a request for additional resources just to try to cope. But even if this request were granted, we still need additional time so that the key members of our team have a chance to understand the contents of the disclosures. This is uh, what our professional responsibility as lawyers dictates that we must do. We are now being asked to press on ahead reading new evidence alongside our full-time full daily work when the prosecution had at least a head start of several months probably much longer. In fact, some of the statements are considerably older, dating even back to 2011. So that is a considerable head start they have on us. Obviously, let that be clear, we don't expect to have the same amount of time as that, considering the focus uh, on trial expediency, but we do need time. Thank you. អរគុណលោកវេតកពេលបាទលានេះអង្គនេះផ្ដល់វិធីការជួនទៅក្រុមមេធាវីរបស់លោកនួនជាទេការបាករបស់យើងគឺពិតជាមានច្រើន <coughs> ແລະសាធារការជួនតំណឹងរបស់សហព្រះញ្ញាស្ដីអំពីសេចក្តីថ្លែងការដែលបានដែលត្រូវបានបង្កឲ្យមានភាពងាយស្រួលចាំបាច់ក្នុងការរៀបចំការពាក្យក្តីឲ្យគូនក្តីរបស់យើងនោះទេតែថាយើងខ្ញុំ
ai chả xa đã đại đòi xạ phía nhà chẳng luôn ai chặt tục chỉ phó tăng bán các bà trời thư tam cầm nọt nơi vị thiên tích nông đội viên cháy nơi khăn nông vị thiên bát sập bàm bí bấy nâng bát sập bàm bí buồn cư dân trời vị phía ai cả xa tiền ổn nô đồng bây ai lớp nơi ảnh nhạc tạc cám bẹo bón nâng cao tổ tùa ai cả xa thì bấy dương khi nhóm mình bà cọc thà miên ca dù khơi đôi khi nhé lợi từ lơ áo vây đạp bẹo bón khi nhé từ nâng ai cả xa tiền ổn nô đồ đồng nàng xa phía nhá bàn lực vì mà sao mình chạy đám Rồi thì dưỡng mình cả dư rưu cầu mình dưỡng xa khó khó khăn nha chồng bố Rương cả đấy chồng bố cả cả bia con cả đấy riêng riêng khá luận phong đài Đối chân này mình thì phía khó khăn nha rồi viên mê thử vi trong mê thử vi cả bia nâng cả dư khuyên khó khăn nha rồi bỏ xa bia nha nó tế Xong bây tài khá nông trong mê thử vi cả bia đối khăn nha rồi viên cọm lục nguồn chìa nâng cọm lục chìa xâm phón Có miễn chấm nạch khóa anh khá nha khó khá nha Miễn cả dư lực khá nha khá nha Vì cả chọc bẹp bọn này ai cả xa tự ổn nụ phong đài Tuy buồn Dương trời thư ca chất thân nạc ở bàn đạch bình khá nha Nước khá nông xâm nông ai cả xa đỏ trang xâm bàm nha Rồi viên sẽ đây thay anh cả rồi bỏ xa xấy Đại lực là đo xa khai cam nơi khăn nông xa mà nà ca nơi khăn nông xùm nông rừng ní Xa xấy đại ban mọc đo xa khai cam rồi hỏi Nâng nét đại trư là mọc đo xa khai cam nơi bê khả mục tiệt phòng đài Cứ dương trời thua ở ban đách vì xe đây thay anh cả xem xem tiệt Xe đây thay anh cả rồi bỏ xa xấy để làm đó sẽ kể cầm khăn nông xạ và nạc cá Trời tại ai dục mọc bà 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 liêm liêm bàn Dương có trời thư phước đôi khí này đáy chồng bố Sầm rong sạch cái đây Nây sạch cái đây thay anh cá rồi bỏ nẹ đó tây tiết Đã nâng trời lực là Đó sẽ kể cầm khăn nông bê xạ và nạc cá Bọn ta Sạch cái đây thay anh cá Đó tây tiết Mình trời dục mọc bà 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 lời Đó rạp nà mình miễn sẽ cái đây xâm rách lưu phiếp để ai tổ tùa dục bán này ai cái xa chẳng nụ Thì bảm dương khi nhóm mình mến chia phía kỳ để ai chôn mơ ai cái xa nâng thơ ca sơ bằng kết nâng khăn nông xâm nông rương xôn xôn bây nâng xôn xôn buồn lại Mình giang tiết dương miễn ổ tì hò vì phép mình trâm trời này ai cả xa nơi khăn nông cần bọn hết để bàn lược làng nơi khăn nông xạ mà nạc cá đôi xạ xây văn xuyên còn lòng tầng ní cư miên phép khó khăn nha rồi viên ca phát đo sạch hay cắm đã miên nơi khăn nông cần bọn hết Nâng ca mọc chlai bằng phư chồng bố mục ông chồng nông chồng rẻ Dương trừ bóng bà dạch chồng bố sẽ kết đây thay anh ca thiền nô Vì bố Dương khi nhóm mình miên lạc tập hiếp Vì nứt Mơ là vậy đại bàn nì dê nơi khăn nông xài áp thoát phẩm lên Phẩm chơi hình lục đồng nào xa bè nhà Xa bè nhà ông đã chết First of all, I apologize to Council. I did not, I certainly do not want to interrupt him, but if I don't uh, interrupt, I'm afraid there could be damage. I heard Council mentioning names of witnesses, and we are, although the gallery is empty, we are in open session. I would just uh, 
remind counsel that it's probably better off not to mention any names when we're talking about cases three and four disclosures. Generally, as a general rule, avoid mentioning names of witnesses. And counsel, the chamber is aware of what has to be done with documents, so if you could perhaps concentrate on the relevant issues of this subject. បាទសមគុណខ្ញុំសូមបន្តដូច្នេះបញ្ហាសេចក្តីថ្លែងការរបស់សក្សីទាំងអស់ the norm of mean car punch alum, no car, full cannot hide no diary. Deep Ramui Young Chum, Flop Band to two Bobby Star with Howie, Pika to two band of Aikasa, Young Chansom Baum, Nick Nonsom Nom Room, Son Son P, Luson Mui Dial Joe Room Knong Dial Pine Honey, Joe Room, the Knong Car. រំលោភបំពានលើសិទ្ធទទួលបាននៅការជំនុំជម្រះប្រកបដោយសមធរសម្រាប់លោកខៀវសម្ភនហើយដែលយើងមិនត្រូវឲ្យជាន់ដានន
apologize. I misunderstood. I was waiting for the defense response. You said to wait until afterwards. Your Honors, first of all, let me begin by saying that the co-prosecutors recognize that this is a difficult issue, that when you have ongoing disclosures from ongoing investigations during the trial, it puts a burden on everyone. It puts a burden on the defense. We understand that. It brings issues to Your Honors' attention, and it certainly brings a burden on the prosecution. We have been working diligently for many, many months trying, seeking these disclosures to have them come forward in as uh, expeditious a manner as possible. But having said that, let me also respond to some of the defense complaints because I find that their motion mixing so many different issues, issues that are properly before the Supreme Court about possible new evidence on appeal, issues that are properly before the investigating judges regarding the conditions of disclosure and contradictory complaints here. They complain that the prosecution is dumping material on them. The amount of material. They complain about the number of pages, and yet they ask the, the honors to order us to do more disclosures, to, to ask us to do, investigate all of the documents on the other case files and disclose those. Um, they also complain that they get these documents late. Your Honor, we have been uh, talking about this issue of disclosures from 3 and 4 for approximately, well, since well before the start of this trial, since at least approximately this time or a little later last year. The investigations in 3 and 4, the fact that they were ongoing and are ongoing, is public knowledge. The investigative judges have disclosed the locations that are under investigations in 3 and 4. The defense has known that since long before we started this phase of the trial, case 0202. So the defense also says that while they complain about us dumping the material, they say the material is very relevant to them and highly relevant to their defense. So they can't have it both ways, complain that we're giving them material, that it's too much, and then say they want more and it's very relevant. We want to work with them and work with you to try to find uh, ways to go forward as expeditiously as possible without disrupting these proceedings. We very much appreciate hearing that the defense teams want the case to proceed expeditiously. So I think it's probably most beneficial to to go for the to the request for relief from the defense one by one and to address those issues. First, regarding the adjournment of the hearings, frankly, we do not believe that is necessary. The amount of material that the defense has talked about approximately a little less than 3,000 pages. In terms of international criminal law cases, tribunal cases. This is a sm very small amount of documents. If you look at other cases, uh, Mladic case, or Karadzic case, you see regularly the prosecution ongoing disclosures of 50, as much as 50,000 pages and higher at a time to the defense teams. So it's not the number itself in the context of a case this complicated, it's not that great. We've also haven't seen the defense actually justify why any of the material would be necessary for the examination of the upcoming witnesses. They've been very, very general and unspecific. Simply saying that because these witnesses were leading cadre, that they need more time to prepare. But they haven't said why the material that was disclosed or is to be disclosed would be necessary for the examination of that witness. Now we've heard Nunchia defense assert that the material that they received recently would have changed their questions for the witness who testified publicly Elizabeth Becker. They haven't explained what that is. Now, it's not difficult to think of another question I should have asked a witness. What else could we have asked a witness related to this statement? 
but the test has to be whether it has a substantial effect, whether it's significant to the testimony of that witness and significant to the defense. They haven't even tried to actually explain what that is. But we recognize that there could be situations where material is disclosed that does substantially affect testimony of a witness who's already completed their testimony. In that case, the procedure would have to be that the parties make an application. Whatever party feels that the material is necessary in a further examination of that witness is necessary. And the court would then weigh whether the real relevance of the disclosure to the testimony of that witness versus the inconvenience and, and the delay in the trial caused by recalling a witness to testify. So we think it's possible and the trial should go forward with the disclosures ongoing. We can't do anything about the fact that the investigation is ongoing. Disclosures will continue and we have to wait for the investigative judges to make a decision, the best international co-investigating judge to make a decision on disclosures. And uh, that requires a review of the statements by, uh, presumed by his staff, and some uh, material that could be sensitive to witness protection or safety is redacted. It's time consuming. And frankly, I suspect it will be probably more time consuming now that it's been publicly announced that individuals have been charged in absentia because that means that there will be many more filings from the defense teams on those cases before the investigating judges, which, by the way, we will also have to be engaged in responding to. So our workload will go up exponentially also. The second request for relief by the defense was to schedule a trial management meeting, which your honors have done. Uh, the third request, I'm going to paragraph 19, going through the relief, paragraph C, was to dis consult with the defense in terms of the length of any adjournment needed. Well, the court is doing that, but again, it's our position that we should be able to proceed on the current schedule. And then, indeed, the defense suggests that the next trial segment be something like the 1st of January down. Uh, we have no problem with that, and we've even suggested uh, another change in the order that the, your honors consider putting back the Tanan Dam a bit further back because that location will have many, many uh, disclosed statements that we disclose. Now, in the, the paragraph E, the defense asks your honors, at this point, in the middle of the trial, to assure the parties that the current Khmer Krom will not be included as a quasi-unquote targeted group in the case 2-2 trial. Well, Your Honor, the charges in this case are the closing order. The charges are the charges. I assume what the defense is now asking Your Honors to do, especially given the objection to Judge Laverne's question, is to prevent evidence of harm committed against the Khmer Krom people from being admitted as evidence in this trial. And we're absolutely opposed to that. The Khmer Krom people suffered. They were victims, and they were victimized for various reasons, everything from picking up a coconut, which you weren't supposed to do, to the fact that they were seen as perceived enemies, which is a big part of this case. Because they had come originally from Vietnam, they were seen as perceived enemies, and they were targeted as a group by the Khmer Rouge, there's no doubt about that. Their evidence should not be excluded in this case. Paragraph F, the defense asks your honors to order international co-prosecutors to advise the parties whether there may be relevant evidence on the case files of 3 and 4 and to, dis to request the international co-investment judge to disclose evidence of this nature as soon as possible. And I have absolutely no problem with your honors making that order. That we understand that is our obligation. 
And finally, the defense uh, asks your, your honors to quash the disclosure conditions imposed upon the defense uh, when the international co-investigating judge gave the defense access to material from the investigations in case three and four. I don't have to tell your honors that by law, investigations are confidential. The international co-investigating judge made an exception to the confidentiality recognizing the importance of making sure that your honors and the defense and all parties in these proceedings had relevant information, information that's relevant to issues in case two that comes from the investigation in cases three and four. As far as the conditions that were imposed upon the defense, I am sympathetic to the defense about this. And I would suggest that they take that up with the international co-investigating judge. I would gladly support them to ask for some relaxation of that. But of course, I think it's also necessary for the defense uh, and I think they can do that, this, to build up trust, to show that they will respect the confidentiality of that material and use it only as appropriate and under the conditions that the judge allows. But I certainly would understand the defense would want those conditions relaxed. I hope they will be relaxed. I would even support them to what extent I have any influence. But I would say that publicly, I support them in getting a relaxation of those conditions. And as far as addressing some of the more specifics about our disclosure, I'd ask Mr. Lysak be allowed to address to you. He's very the most familiar with the issues. เอ่อสําหรับในเรื่องเราไปสําระให้